Alrighty, YouTube. It's been long and awaited since the last God Guide was released. And um, we are at the Georgia house. <clears throat> so hopefully the graphics and everything are still good for recording. But today we'll be doing an in-depth God Guide on the God Cupid uh, with his best skin on, of course. A lot of been, uh, been a lot of Cupid play in the recent um, weeks of the SPL and probably just a lot of Cupid play in your ranked games. You might be wondering, what the hell, man? Why is everyone playing this god? What's uh, what's the sudden urge for people to play this character? And it's got a lot to do with um, mostly his kit being really good against the top uh, picks in many of the roles. His 1v1 being exceptionally good against most hunters. The ability to sustain um, through team fights with his hearts. And um, him having a great build path. Kind of due to his kit and his uh, 3 attack speed increase. Um, so... Yeah, let's jump right into it. I don't have a script or anything, so hopefully I don't forget anything and then this doesn't have to get edited out a couple times, whatever, yada, yada, yada. First off, we will start with the kit like we do with most characters. Um, going over his passive, his passive, love struck. Every time you basically hit a god or um, a minion or objective, anything that you hit with a basic attack gives you a stack, goes up to eight stacks, you get 16% more damage. On the first ability you use, when you use an ability, the passive will be consumed. So... Just to show you, you see the little hearts right here in the corner over my thing stacking up. This shows you how many hearts you have. If you don't want to look, you can just see the number. And that stacks up. You get an extremely annoying, annoying passive sound. As you can hear the little dingling right now. And this little, like, baton, I guess, whatever the hell this is, floating around me. That means my passive is stacked. On other skins, it's just a little heart around them. That's how you know. What this um, enables you to do is a couple different things here. Uh, when Cupid has max heart stacks and all enemies in the explosion area are stunned And I think if Cupid has max heart stacks your heart or your mesmerized duration on the ultimate is doubled You get into those abilities in a second besides that they just do extra damage extra healing So it's best to just stack up your passive before you use your one best to stack up your passive before you use your two But two percent isn't like a make it or break it type of uh, Number most of the time, but it's just a thing that you should look out for. Hey is my passive stacked? I'm gonna need it for my heart bomb if it's not stacked, maybe I should consider hitting a minion before I consider hitting a god. Let me delete that real quick, because it's really annoying. Going over his first ability, uh, his heart bomb is his primary ability. It's what he uses to uh, poke and clear and pretty much do everything, just kind of the center of this kit. Um, it is just a straight line ability. Let me turn on normal casting for you. As you can see, here's the distance. It's 55 units, like most abilities. It travels out. It attaches to an enemy, sort of like a Discordia ult. Well, exactly like a Discordia ult, as you can see. Boom, it has an initial hit, plus this explosion afterwards, so it does two uh, sources of damage, an initial hit, plus a detonation. This is the ability that was buffed, and it kind of made Cupid way more viable, way more playable. Um, just the big quality of life buff, it changed uh, the way he was able to clear creeps. They buffed the damage to creeps, and the explosion damage to creeps, so what you can actually do when it's maxed, I think level 4, um, you will I just hear myself. No, um, you will actually get the uh, archers cleared with just one use of the heart bomb. Before, that was not a capability. You would have to auto attack the archers, even if your heart bomb is level five. And believe it or not, that is a very annoying thing that can actually make a character a lot less uh, viable because it just makes you stay in the lane a little bit longer. You can't, you know, rotate out of the lane. You have to be stuck there clearing creeps and whatnot. So now, you can pretty much boom auto one, and then you shoot the creeps, and then they'll blow up. They'll stack. You try to stack them up together. And then they blow up, and yeah. So uh, here's his ability, this main ability. You gotta be hitting this ability to do a lot of damage to Cupid. Now his two, his two is his source of sustain. These hearts, they change on every skin. I don't really know what they're meant to be on this skin. They look like little bombs or something. Basically, uh, Cupid just kind of drops some hearts in a triangle, and um, picking them up gives the person who picks them up health. And what's really interesting is that they give Cupid mana, and it's a flat mana rate. And as you can see, if you have your mana numbers enabled on your uh, ability keys, right? This ability costs 50 mana, but you get 30 mana per heart. So I'm no mathematician, but this is more mana gained than spent when you drop them, right? You're getting 90 mana for the hearts on an ability that costs 50 mana, so you're getting a 40 mana net. Meaning when you're Oom um, as Cupid, it is actually beneficial for you to drop these hearts and have your teammates pick them up, assuming you're not low and you need them, because they will actually give you more mana than you spend. And it's a pretty good way to stay pretty topped off mana-wise in lane. 
Um, sometimes I'll get my heart to level 2, or level 3 that is, if I'm really oom, sometimes, or most of the time you'll get them at level 4. But we'll get into that after, so yeah. Ability, they drop like this, people pick them up, they gain health, you get mana. That's pretty much it. Uh, Cupid's 3 is this dash. Boom. Short dash, oh it's not a short dash, it's a pretty long dash. And, um, I believe people walk faster, right? Yeah. People walk faster when they're on it, so you get an increased movement speed on the actual path itself. It's kind of like a Hebo carpet, but uh, on a budget. Uh, and the passive is what's really nice. It's what enabled Cupid to become really good in this meta, because obviously it's a auto-attack meta at the moment with Pen and Crit both being extremely viable. And the Transcendence build not being opted for very often. Cupid gets extra passive attack speed, meaning you do not have to activate the dash frame to get the passive attack speed. And this scales all the way up to 20%, which is extremely nice because you just have a permanent 20% attack speed increase, sort of like Uller's passive on his ultimate. And then uh, his four ability, Fields of Love. I've been reading the names. Sorry if that bothers anybody. Fields of Love is a huge circle. Let me set this to normal cast so you could see it. Here is his ability. It's a very, very massive circle that drops. It takes a couple seconds to detonate. And it does a bunch of damage and mesmerizes pretty much. And a mes, if you don't know what a mesmerize is, it's a... Hard CC that an, essentially um, you put the person to sleep or you mesmerize them and that means that once the target is hit, the mesmerization is broken, but until the person is hit, they are stuck there. You can beat the mes if you want, like an Apollo mes or a Cupid alt mes, um, and if you don't, you're just stuck, sat there doing nothing. Um, what's interesting is I don't believe mes... DRs? I don't, I don't remember. They, they did something because the alt used to DR the one and then you would get a, a much shorter stun. So now it's a mesmerize and a stun, which means the stun doesn't get DR'd and DR'd means diminishing returns. And when you stack stuns or hard CC, the CC gets weaker and weaker every time. So now you get the full stun plus the mes from the alt. Um, just a nice thing that they changed by keep it a while ago. So there are his abilities and what they do. Um, I'll shoot the alt out and I didn't actually shoot it. So you shoot it out. Boom, takes something like two seconds and then it pops. Uh, they are slowed inside, but are they are slowed and crippled inside of the field. But if uh, if they bead, they can obviously jump on out, or if they have a sprint, they can run on out. And it's actually what makes Cupid kind of kind of made Cupid a while a week a while ago, where you could just grab a wing blade or a sprint and then run out of his ult. I'd say his ult's a good part of his kit, but it's also probably the worst part of his kit because it's the hardest to land. And you're thinking, dude, Max, this is a huge ult. How could you ever miss this? Well, if you're not smack in the middle of the ult, it's actually extremely easy to just walk out one of the corners. And you could say, yeah, well, if you're just a good keeper, you'll get better ults. And as much as I agree with that, uh, just through play, the ult is not that easy to guarantee. Moving on, we will talk about uh what i level and how i level the abilities and then we'll go on to the build and game plan whatnot i'll give you a couple, bunch of tips because cupid's actually a very straightforward hunter but he has some uh niche mechanics that are pretty cool and you can learn them a little bit so uh what do we level we almost always start with the cupid one i don't ever see a reason starting with the two or the three unless maybe you got cheese game level one you need to get your dash happens but for uh 99 of the games if you're playing this character you will be picking up the one at level one at level two, you will almost always be getting your dash. The dash is just the staple. You know, it's just a staple of us get every hunter kind of who has a dash gets his dash early on. Otherwise, you become much less safe at level two. Moving on to level three in lane is when it's a little bit trickier. You can opt for the hearts. Like I said, if you're running really, really oom and you're not getting totems, you're like, dang, I really need hearts and I don't want to back for anything. You can go ahead and get the hearts level three. Otherwise, it's quite nice to get an extra point in your one. Um, and then level four, you obviously get your two, and then your four at level five, and then you just max your one. After that is where it becomes a little bit tricky because depending on the matchup, your leveling priorities can change. If you're against a poke heavy character, such as Hachiman, such as Uller, you can obviously put an extra point in your hearts or maybe two points in the hearts, which will add for a lot of sustain in the lane. And if not, if you're just against a farmer, like, I don't know, Rama, Jingwei, somebody who's not really boxing you too often, they're not poking you too hard, the only day is gonna come from autos and things like that, you can opt to max the dash. That's what I usually do. Um, if the guy's poking me a bunch, I'm like, dang, I really need health, I'll throw an extra point in my two, it'll help me sustain a little bit more. But if they're not, I will just max the E3. Um, the ult is tricky. Some people choose to get two points in the ult at level nine, three points at level 13. Personally, it depends on the matchup for me. If I'm against somebody who's gonna be consistently jumping or 
ulting out of my ult and I'm not getting into the damage and I'm just using it as a bait to, you know, take their ult or whatever. I don't actually put any extra points in it. So for instance, matchups like Rama and Jingwei, gods that are going to be ulting out of your ult, I don't actually put extra points in it and I'll put extra points in my one or two or my two or three against gods that are most likely going to stay in it. Gods like, I don't know, AMC, Apollo, Artemis, Medusa can pretty uh like medusa doesn't have the easiest time getting out of it on her sometimes even though he can ult and walk straight there's there's a you know there's a, a plethora of hunters that you can kind of guarantee the cupid ult on and that's where he really really shines when he's getting his ult damage off that is when i would recommend maxing the ultimate uh do remember that it's a cripple so gods that have jumps and dashes cannot jump or dash out of it unless they are cc immune and yeah that's loving order pretty much max your one at all times and then the two and the three depend on what you're against and then points in the ult really depend on the comp you got to look at what you're against who their support is if their support's like a sobek or a herc somebody who really relies on their dash or their jump to kind of get in and get out i think getting the points in the ult's nice because then you're going to be ulting them sometimes and having that extra damage to burst tanks is cool and all sometimes if you're going to say like a really dash oriented or jump oriented jungler somebody who really needs to you know get all their damage off and it's in the form of dash we're looking at gods like Serket, gods like susano getting extra points in the ult is quite nice as well because you want to be getting that ult on them and they're not going to be getting out of it unless they have cc immunity of course so yeah uh moving on to the builds uh the builds are kind of fluctuating right now we've seen a couple of builds in the league just based off of um our game against SSG, we saw Vote going the uh, Atalanta's Fail Not Crit variant. Uh, I myself have been rushing Oboe third. Some people are going Oboe third into crit. Some people are going Atalanta's Fail Not Oboe. Some, you know, th there's a lot of builds happening right now, and I'll uh, try and talk about them a little bit, not too much, because most of these builds are just kind of cookie cutter, and you just got to play by ear for the most part. You always want your devourers on Cupid. Some people are like, hey, why don't you build... Um, Trans on Cupid, he got scaling on his hearts. He has two damage abilities that are pretty uh, high damage and stuff like that. You could, but I just think Trans is not in the meta right now. If we see a return to Trans as an item in a build path, I wouldn't be surprised if people were building Trans on Cupid. But seeing how strong Devs is right now and how strong the build path is with Devs, I would just go Devs uh, probably 10 out of 10 times. So moving on from Devs, we always go into our Ninja Tabby. It's just good. Um, you will be getting Silver Branch on this character, so having that extra attack speed is quite nice. Even if it's not that much, it does add to uh, our power from the Silver Branch passive. Um, can go Warrior Tabai if you want, but I personally almost always go Ninja Tabai. From here, it's where it gets a little tricky and you know you can kind of fluctuate and change based on uh, what you're against. I have been going into the Oboe third. A lot of people don't understand why, and I'll give you a quick um, explanation as to why. Oboe third is a great item or Oboe is just a great item itself. It's kind of a staple in the Hunter builds right now, assuming you're not going crit. It does a extremely large amount of passive AOE damage in team fights. On top of that, it kind of, you know, it's really good for farming if your abilities are down and whatnot. Um, it's got a stupidly low price. I don't know why I worded it that way. I was gonna talk about its passive, but I decided to talk about its price instead. It's an extremely cheap item. It's only 2,100 gold, as you can see. If I sell this item and pick it back up, it's 2,100 gold, meaning you can get it quite early in your builds which means it's quite a fast power spike. Sometimes you'll have Oboe before they even have their Atalantis tier two done, which is quite nice. Um, no, it is not the best, bo best boxing item. No, it is not the high, I don't know if it's the highest DPS third item. I haven't really done the math on it. And no, it's not always gonna feel amazing to have this item, but what does feel great is that it really helps your build path as an ADC. Typically what you saw before was people instead of going this Oba, they would go the Ikavol and then into the Kins And then this fifth item would become extremely tricky because you want Atalanta's here And then you want Silver Branch in the sixth item slot where your blessing goes Which means you're not getting your Oba until after boots And if you decided to go Obo over Silver Branch and you're wasting your attack speed and you're not getting the pass from Silver Branch So it takes you six items instead of or it takes you seven items instead of six to actually get that oboe or that silver branch and it was just very very funky for my build path and i was like dude what's the point of even going ikavol a lot of the times in spl and in high ranked you kind of just hard farm and you don't really do anything and then cool man i have ikavol cool i i can i can outbox you now but the thing is you can kind of just choose to not fight you can manipulate waves and manipulate jungle timers to be in your favor to be in positions that you don't actually need to ever come into combat with the other adcs and what I noticed is that when I'm going Ikavol and I'm not fighting them, then it really scuffs my build path, like I just said. So I just started to go Oboe, and it felt pretty great. And I was like, 
why not just do this more often and through trials and tribulations it showed that it was quite good um after our oboe we typically go into the kin size a lot of people are asking why don't i get percent pen here well i don't know if percent pen is really that necessary in this item slot when you can just go kins kins passive kind of makes up for you not actually doing much auto attack damage in itself and for the most part you're almost always ahead in adc just because you get a lot of uh solo farm and you're kind of just you know just farming for late game so we're going for the maximum late game build. If you really need uh, tank shredding uh, damage, I don't think I would go Oboe third. For, I don't know. I don't know in what scenario you would really want that. Maybe you'd go Atalanta's and Kim's. But let's move on. Um, after this, we do head on into the Atalanta's. If you're really, really, really far ahead and you're on Cupid and you're like, dang, I don't really need the Atalanta's yet. You can opt for the Silver Branch and then get Atalanta sixth. But if you're, you know, pretty much tied or maybe even behind you should go for the atalanta's bow and then we finish the build off with our silver branch as you can see we get eight stacks of silver branch with an extra 16 power um this is pretty much just the staple penetration build right now uh you can pretty much go at every single game and feel pretty great um it's pretty much where i build the most of my games we have seen crit come back to the meta and i'll talk about that in a second but for the sixth item this item is very very easy to replace there's a million different items you can buy we've seen Plenty of hunters going discords if you're getting hard dove berserkers if they have a lot of physical dive It's nice. It caps you on your pen. It's got a little bit of attack speed. So you don't feel too bad replacing the ninja tabby um, It's not very expensive. Sometimes you see people going shoguns for some magical defense if they got two guardians having you with thorns This is a big deal uh, Sometimes you have to people you see people going heart seeker Sometimes you go see people see you see people doing you know a million different things that are kind of viable You can go double life steal in this item slot. You can go you know just just a bunch of items fail not if you want um you know, there's there's a lot of different things you could do um so that would be the entire penetration build and then we will take you through the crit build because it has kind of shown some relevance in the recent day and age and i don't know why i think it's really bad in thorns but if people aren't going to go thorns and their comp doesn't look like it's going to have a lot of thornsers then i do think crit is actually really nice so we're going to go over the fail not variant with um uh fail not wind demon and i don't really know what the other people are doing six item but i'd probably go poison star to mitigate a lot more of the damage incoming some people are going deathbringer and things like that kind of just depends on what you're against and how you're playing and what character you're playing um this is what people are going they were going third item fail not this allows for the um flexibility of going a bunch of different builds instead of committing to the elbow like i do um, you, you see people like Vote, people like Zap go at Atlanta start and then from there on out they're like, hmm, do they have oh, do they have a bunch of Thornsers? Do they have people who are going to be buying Thorns soon? Yes, no, from then on out. Am I having trouble killing tanks, things like that? And then they can opt for either Kins or Failing Up. But just to showcase the crit build, this is um, your fourth item. Fourth item is Failing Up. Uh, Failing Up is an extremely statted item. 45 power, 20% crit chance, 20% CDR, and 10% pen with a, a very nice passive. Um... It's just a good item. It's just very expensive, but if you can AFK farm to the item, you're going to be feeling pretty good. And then after this is where people are opting for, I think people are going Oboe sometimes. I don't know if it makes sense to go Oboe in this slot. Um, I think Wind Demon's probably just better. I think if they don't have any Thorns, you should just go Wind Demon, and then this feels really good. This sixth item becomes pretty flexible, because I think you should be going Poison Star, or you can go Deathbringer if they don't have anything to Poison Star, or you can go Shuriken if they have healing. The build becomes really flexible, but... The more you stack crit, the better you'll feel. And then the boots is where I think it gets a little like weird because you can just go Oboe because Oboe is such an oversatted item. You can go Deathbringer. You can go Discord. You can go any of those items we talked about just a second before. But um, this is kind of what the vote build looks like, I think. Somebody can quote me and tell me, hey, you're an idiot. This is what he's building. But this is probably what I would build if I was to go this variant. Other than that, you could still do the good old Atalanas into Rage, into Wind Demon, into Poison Star. This feels pretty good still. The only problem is you don't get an extra 10% pen from the fail knot, so you're not actually capped. But in terms of price efficiency and just going crit in general, this build does feel pretty good still, and you could still go for Rage. I don't know why people stop building Rage. It's just a really great kind of stable crit item. Crit item, but maybe I'm missing something. Uh, so this is the crit build. We just show the pen build. I'll go over when you should go, which one and why. Um, and then we'll go into some gameplay tips and tricks and I'll just show you how to kind of operate the character. So I think one of the highest asked questions is, 
as a new player, as a low rank player, as a new ADC, when should I be going pen? When should I be going crit? So this whole dynamic of pen versus crit has been along or uh, around for quite a long time. Most seasons, you kind of have both builds kind of jumping in and out of the meta. And the real answer is that it's literally just comp dependent. It is comp, comp, comp dependent. So you really have to be able to identify scenarios in which pen would be better and identify scenarios in which thorns would be better. And I'll give you a couple things to look out for, a couple tips to like, you know, think about when you're going into a game to kind of understand. First thing you're always going to want to look at is their support. Who is their support? Is he a diving support or a peeling support? For the most part, divers are most likely going to get thorns. Peelers are not going to get thorns. Who is a diver? Who's a peeler? We see gods like Herc in the meta. Herc is obviously a hard diver. He's most likely going to get thorns. We see characters like Geb and Kepri being played. Those characters are not looking to hit the back line. They're looking to peel, which means they're probably going to get a defensive relic like um, Shell or Horrific or something like that. Or like a team relic like Frenzy, something like that, right? They're not going to be in your face, throwing all your damage, things like that. So that's the first role that I always look to. Their support, he's really relevant for most of the game, right? What is he going to go? From there on out, you direct your attention to their solo laner. What is their solo laner? Who is their solo laner? Most games, their solo laners are just going to have thorns, and that's probably something you might just you might just going to have to deal. You might just have to deal with. Jeez, I can't speak English. But um, looking at him and his pick is still very important. So you see gods like Arthur and things in the meta. Gods like Arthur are weird because they don't always want blink or they don't always want thorn. Sometimes they want bead. Sometimes they want blink. You know, it's it's kind of game dependent. You got to look at your comp as well. Is this Arthur need the beads for CC immunity? You got to also remember that Cupid kind of counters Arthur because he has a cripple. <laughs> and most of Arthur's damage is like dash oriented. Like both of his threes and his autos and whatnot. Um, so you got to look at the soul laner. Who is it? What's he going to be building? And you kind of just got to guess. Sometimes you'll press tab, they'll have thorns. Sometimes you'll press tab and they won't have thorns. In that scenario, that's when that Atalanta's third build is kind of nice. You can kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, you look at their support. Is there a diver? If there's not, you're already kind of green light for crit. And then you look at their soul laner. Is there going to be a thornser? Most likely yes. But if their support's not hard diving, then crit can really uh, do work. And then, last but not least, you typically, sometimes there's some cheese ADCs, we can go over that in a second, but you typically go to their jungler. If they have a warrior jungler, we've seen some Osiris's in here and there, we've seen some Mulans and things like that. If they have a warrior jungler and you think they might go uh, Thorns, and then there's two more Thorns characters in the games, I just don't recommend going crit. I think it's uh, really counterable, and it's going to make you do a lot more damage to yourself than you recognize and you're going to be feeling really bad in team but if they're a character that's probably going to have blink and beads then thorns obviously a really good way to peel jungler or crit is actually a really good way to peel junglers and i think it would be very nice to get it so basically look at the support is he a diver yes no look at the solo is he a diver will he have thorns yes no you know kind of eyeball it and then the jungler is kind of last resort typically junglers don't go thorns but sometimes they do and uh, yeah, from there on out, you should be able to gauge a decision. Okay, these guys aren't going to be hard diving me, and I think Thorns will do a lot of work. You can go for the Thorns build or the Crit build, or dang, they have a lot of health. They have a lot of uh, hard dive, and I think I really need Pem to kind of eat through probably block stacks and things like that, and just their large health pools. Then I'd recommend going the Pem build. Both builds feel really good. Do keep in mind, Crit is higher DPS, and it's gotten better objective damage and things like that, but it is just easier to dive and harder to play with when you're against good divers. So there is the thorns versus not thorn or crit versus pen spiel. Hopefully um, with those things said and done, you can kind of decipher those scenarios for yourself. Um, sometimes you're gonna go crit and sometimes you're gonna get farm for going crit. And sometimes you're gonna go pen and you're gonna realize late game, dang, they don't actually have any thorns. Maybe it would have been a better, maybe it would have been a better crit game. But you know, those things you will experience, you will live and you will learn. Moving on from the builds, I think we went over most of the builds. I don't really recommend going trans on this character, so I'm just not gonna even show it. Uh, we will go on to gameplay. How do you play Cupid? What do you do? What are the combos and whatnot? How do I not suck at this character? So for the most part, he is just an auto attacker. A lot of his damage is generated from his auto attacks. Do keep in mind that he has good ability damage, but for the most part in team fights, you're kind of just smacking people with your autos. So you wanna be autoing as much as possible. Uh, what you do is you kind of set up your heart bombs, right? You auto and then you try to get a heart bomb on the enemy when you are um, in lane. But 
It is also your main source of clear, so don't be using it on them if you need to clear waves. So you basically look for heart bombs. While they're heart bomb, you attack. Remember that this does stun when your hearts are full, and that's pretty much it. Honestly, the character is very straightforward. Uh, if you want to go for all in plays, you want to use your heart bomb typically first because it'll guarantee a stun and then throw your fields of love on top of it. Try to stun them in the fields of love, and then it's a lot of burst damage. Sometimes, if your passive isn't stacked, I like to throw my pass or my ulti down first to cripple them, you know, kind of force an active, force a panic play. And then I look for my one afterwards. Um, let me change it back to instant cast, just so you can play the character. Um, you'll, you know, start with the ultimate. They'll be slow. They'll be easier to guarantee the one. If they don't have a beads, they'll be messed just like this. And this will fully guarantee the one. You can't really miss off of that. There is like a, a little window of time where you can auto and shoot the one at the same time. So if you hold left click and, you know, shoot your wand at the same time you'll send an auto and your heart bomb out it's just a little bit more burst damage just try to do that uh as for when you're low you know you drop hearts sometimes you can dash through uh you know a line of hearts it'll give you double the health um and yeah you know you dash in drop your all boom one while they're inside of it and pop them character is very easy very straightforward um yeah, I don't know. There really isn't much to go over gameplay wise in terms of like how do you actually play the character. You literally auto, 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 harp on when it's up, auto, 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 auto. Blah. The ulti's up, you can drop it, force an active, force an ulti, try to get your harp on in the ultimate, and it's just huge. Remember that your ult is a mez, so any damage that they take whilst mez will break that mez. So if you're walking up, and you get the alt on them and you're like, okay, they're gonna go mez and maybe your teammate hits him or your oboe hits him or something like that. Or I don't know, maybe there was a heart bomb on the creeps and you alt and it just so happened that it popped at the time that the ult popped. They will break free from that mez and they will be, uh, you know, moving again. Um, as for gameplay tips, um, the first one is this kind of like the auto cancel where you won and then you auto and then you won again. Or you auto one auto again it's just like a double auto it doesn't it's not like an auto cancel but it is just nice to have that auto come out with the heart bomb because if you hit it, it's like whoa two things just hit me not one another uh big tip is if you place hearts along wall so i'll show you here if you have your hearts like this you see how they spread out a huge in a huge triangle if you walk along if you put your hearts along the walls you'll see that they stack up like this and this is really really nice because when you're running away you can kind of run through and take the double heart and the way you do this is you kind of just get it as close to the wall as possible and typically they'll stack up like that um that is just a really nice thing to do especially if you're like running through the jungle and stuff yo support if you need heals boom on that wall and then it becomes much more easy to grab all three of these hearts than to uh you know spread out like they like they do um as for the alt, your alt is a huge active forcer, so do throw this alt out as much as possible. Uh, it's pretty bad for cupids to run around with their ulti up and not look for opportunities. Even if you don't get kills, just forcing actives, forcing ultimates is really great because cupid's kid is really good outside of his ult. Um, so yeah, you know, just if you're in a if you're in a matchup where you can solve them when their ult is down, try to get their ult, force their ults all the time. You'll see me doing against Ramas and things like that. Throw the ult out, make them ult, and they become a lot less safe against you. Um, especially if you have fail not like fourth item or third item. I don't really go fail not third item, but if you have fail not, then that CDR makes a big difference in the one view. Um, do remember that CC immunity can make people free from the ult on top of wing blades. If you see somebody have a wing blade, do not throw your ult out on them. You'll speed them up and they will run right out of your ultimate. Um, another thing to look out for is that if you ult somebody whilst they are CC immune and then they lose that CC immunity, they will still be unaffected by the slow and the cripple by Cupid's ult. They'll still take the damage if they're inside the circle when it pops. But if they are CC immune while you ult and then they lose their CC immunity, they will just walk out of your ult. You might be like, what the hell? This ability is bugged. But it's just an interaction. That's just how it works. Um, so for instance, if you ult somebody like... I don't know if you ult if you ult an Anubis while he's ulting and then he cancels his ult and he will be able to run out of your ult, assuming it's like a poorly placed ult or something like that. But just look out for that and uh, don't be like, what the heck, man? This ability is bugged. How is he doing that? Um, as for how to play the lane, it's quite interesting. So what you'll see is if you... I'm going to sell my items because I'm going to want to this wave. If you heart bomb the first creeps, it is very annoying to get the wave stacked up. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. When you go to lane, right, and you heart bomb these creeps, if you don't auto them back, a lot of the times they won't actually hit. See, 
the harp on will only have the front three creeps, and then you have these creeps in the back that are still really hard to deal with. They're not hard, but they're just annoying, right? It's easier to it's better to hit the creeps with all six of or all six creeps with your harp bomb rather than three out of six. So, an easy way to fix this, there's two ways to do it actually. Um, is to either how do I reset? An easy way to fix this is auto attack before you actually throw your harp bomb out to stack them up a little bit so that they try to get up or try to get stacked up and also hit the heart bombed creep to knock them back towards the back this will usually mean that you'll hit five maybe six creeps and it just feels way 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 better for the clear another way you can almost always guarantee that is um by hitting either the third melee or the archer this one right here typically speaking if you uh time it well it'll hit all six just like that um that's how you really clear uh, you rarely see people do the third archer or the third melee or the fourth archer because it's a little weird getting that angle in. You know, it's better to just throw the harp on out, boom, and then start sacking them with your autos. But it is a cool thing that you can do to make sure you hit most of the creeps. Um, a really cool thing about Cupid is that when you kill the target harp bomb, they instantly pop, the harp bomb instantly pops off of the target. So if it's a minion or a god, if they are harp bombed and killed whilst harp bombed, the heart bomb will instantly pop, right? So what that means is that if you have your passive stacked, as you can read here, you actually stun enemies with your heart bomb. Um, when you kill a creep with the heart bomb, you will instantly stun anything around it in the vicinity of the heart bomb. So what you'll see is, you'll see this creep right here, it's dying, right? If I throw my heart bomb out right now, it'll instantly die and pop the heart bomb, meaning that anything in this vicinity will be instantly stunned. And what that's nice for, what that's nice for, is when there's hunters against you that stack up on top of their creeps or things like that, you can go for this play, instantly pop the creep with your heart bomb, and then you can either just auto them a bunch of times and get a bunch of free poke out, or you can then actually commit with your ultimate. And there's another way to play it, where you can pre-ultimate the creeps and the player, and then pop your heart bomb. And uh, I'll show you right now if I can get all my passives up. So you see my heart bomb is stacked, or my passive stacked. If you ult right now, oh no, wait, you can't pre-ult. I'm an idiot such an idiot what you can do is you can heart bomb and then ult. sorry i'm, I'm a fool because if you ult first you lose your heart stacks then you don't actually yeah sorry so if, if you have your one stacked or your heart stacked then you could one instantly pop it then drop the ult do not do it the other way around because the heart bomb is not going to stun it's just going to deal damage um on top of that cupid ult it's kind of like this you know it's, it's a nice ability and whatnot but don't be shy to throw it out to actually clear the wave it doesn't clear the wave at rank one so level five you actually have to one and four the wave to clear it but it's kind of like a who you all kind of like an honor roll don't be afraid to use it it just get wave pressure and clear and leave it just, it's just kind of the size of the lane right so it's kind of hard for people to be like oh he's ulting let me go fight him now right because look at the size of this ult it's massive um yeah, so that's pretty much. I mean, that's pretty much how you play them in team fights. Make sure you're consistently dropping hearts in the back or in the front. Whoever's taking damage doesn't matter. Also, try to do this heart trick as much as possible. Get the hearts next to the wall. I play it on normal cast to always try to get this little uh, interaction. But if you feel real comfortable, feel free to play it on instant cast or quick cast, whatever you want. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's most of Cupid's kit kind of finished. I don't really know if there's anything that crazy i'll kind of show you uh what i would do against gods i guess it's buy some items here buy some items i don't boom, boom i'll go with this this bada bing bada boom and let's go fight ourselves a bot we're gonna fight against uh <clears throat> fine okay real quick um remember that your ult is a cripple i've said this a million times in, a, in this guide but it does cripple out tanks as well which is quite a big deal uh we'll see we have quite a bit of damage so yeah most of this damage comes from auto attacks and your one remember that your one auto pops things like that drop heals dash away dash in things like that cupid is really really good against hunters that don't have cc immunity like neath because they cannot get away from that ult so once this ultimate is dropped they don't have any choice but to either use an active or to stand it and then you can look for that big damage off the uh ultimate or just you know off the mess and stuff off this wherever you want to play it um yeah i mean that's pretty much cupid in a nutshell Stack up your passive, drop your ones on them, look for the stun, hit them off the stun, maybe drop the ult. Oh, actually, I want to go over ult timing. So, 
Uh, there is a way to like, there's not, there's not like a way, but make sure you're not just dropping your ult right away. You should drop it like right now so they'd actually get stunned inside of the ult. Um, if you won four right away, I think there's not always a guarantee that they're gonna get stunned in the ult. Though the double slow kind of should guarantee it, but just in general, let the heart bomb tick for a few seconds when it's uh, on the enemy, and then drop your ult. Not a few seconds; it's kind of an exaggeration. Just let the heart bomb tick down a little bit, and then drop the ult shortly after, and that should pretty much guarantee the uh, ult will burst as soon as the heart bomb pops, and it's like a huge, huge, huge burst damage. Unless they have Aegis, then. Um, don't do that. They can't Aegis all you. But, yeah. Um, as for actives, beads Aegis for the most part. Unless you're against a uh, heavy auto attack slash heavy auto attack dive comp. How to get a shell. Get the shell when you need it. If you're against some burst mages, go Aegis. Besides that, you don't really need blink early on this character. You just got enough engage, lockdown, things like that just in his kit. Um, yeah. I think that's uh, pretty much it. We went over the builds, we went over the abilities, we went over how to play them, what to do, and uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think that's 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 a wrap. If there's anything that I left out from the guide, please do comment down in the comment section below. Hey, you didn't explain this. Hey, I've had trouble doing you know, so, and I'll try my best to get back to each and every one of you. Uh, that is it for this Cupid guide. Cupid's a fun, a fun character. Not fun to play against, but fun to play as. And a very, very, very powerful character right now. Play him before he gets super nerfed. And I bet you will farm. Uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification on the top right corner of your screen to know when I upload next. Like I said in the last video, guys, I'm very sorry about the lack of uploads in the past a uh, couple days i've had a couple internet issues with my streams going down and whatnot and i've had uh, a flight i had a flight to georgia and a pack and stuff like that and it was just you know it was a big mess but now we're here at the team house we're at a streaming setup so should be good to go content will continue as it will. so yeah hope you guys have a wonderful day night afternoon whatever time it is you're watching this hope you did enjoy the guide and uh yeah let me know what character you want to see next down below i'll probably do a rama guide just because these are the two most relevant characters in the meta right now and uh, yeah, until the next video, I hope you enjoyed. I'm out.